you know one of the vps uh, in the ecosystem today uh, yash thank you so much for taking time to speak with us uh, so this is a group of vc analysts and associates you know hopefully a lot of us will follow in your footsteps um, yash can you like start off with like you know a bit about yourself your background what was your journey how did you really get started yeah hey thanks for having me here i hope you guys will be kind to me <laughs> uh, so my journey i think uh, uh, i did my engineering from iit roorkee landed up in flipkart uh, got a call from a head hunter that a vc is hiring that was the time where everybody i didn't know what a vc was to be very honest this was 2014 late uh, i turned it down <laughs> <laughs> so there was a friend of mine who was at McKinsey back then, and he was like, "Why are you turning it down? These are great opportunities. You can go to your MBA. I mean, it's just fascinating how the ecosystem is changing, you know, in, in seven, eight years." Interviewed with a bunch of firms, uh, landed up at Kalari Capital, spent three years at the firm. Then one of the partners at the firm left to start his own fund. Uh, this was Bala, who currently runs Arkham Ventures. So. Joined Bala right from day one. Saw the fundraising side of the business. Um, thought I should still go to school. I was headed to school last year for my MBA. Uh, there's a reason for that. I can talk about that as well. Then pandemic happened again. Serendipity. I had another year. I thought, what to do? The most of this year, I thought, you know, let's start my weekend project that I've been trying to do for eight years. That कुछ करते हैं खुद का Finally thought, okay, this is the best time to do something of your own, and ended up doing this. And uh, yeah, so far so good. We just closed our second fund. Uh, yeah, that's where we are. So, how did you decide to take the plunge? Like you spoke about your weekend project, but uh, you know, from doing angel investing to actually institutionalizing a fund, it's a big jump, right? So, what was your thought process? What did you, uh, you know, what was the motivation? um actually i think when i say weekend projects i'm sure you each one of you have those friends who are always pinging you yaar startup karte hain weekend pe wo google sheet bana ke usme kuch kuch padhte hain right meri life mein bhi wo bahut ho raha tha but it never materialized at all right because my heart was always into this i i really loved my job uh, at kalari and at arkam then at arkam i'm sure each one of you been given this advice ke product kar lo Right at this time, you should do product. I I was given that advice to everyone. I used to speak to yeah, product करो, product करो, right? So at my last firm, I spoke to Bala, who was my boss, that you know I'm gonna be spending three days at a week at a portfolio company office, and I went into that and I told each the two of the CEOs that I was working with that I'll work with your product team, right? But even there, I drifted towards. you know on fundraising strategy projects matlab it was a natch i i used to enjoy those conversations a lot and then i used to see investors on the other side right now helping the ceo on fundraising and i used to miss that so that got clear to me that uh, why be an average operator have just do what you like right i enjoy doing what i so and la and also at my last firm i saw the fundraising side of the business and which was really really helpful in the sense that i got, i got to see how do you raise a fund what do you need to put together a fund and last year i said karna to kuch hai kabhi na kabhi apna why not you know um build a fund because my last job was was a great way for me to sort of like uh, uh i don't know prep up for that got it uh guys feel free to you know keep the session interactive any questions that you have please feel free to just raise your hand and jump in um maybe i'll, I'll just uh, go on for the next one as well uh, so you touched upon this briefly with respect to fundraise so i think that is something not a lot of us uh, in this group are uh, actively exposed to um so how was that process you know like while raising it for your own fund how was your fundraising experience what were the avenues what were your uh, what was your process no it 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 was kind of what do you say unexpected for me because i came from a large firm where we never worried about fundraising right i mean uh, things things would happen on their own 
right? We would know we have raised up. I mean, we do some work, but not be, you know, uh, that involved, right? And then going to work for a small firm, then you actually see what it's like. Then you actually realize that it's not that easy, right? I mean, uh, fundraising is the, I would say, uh, the most critical part of being in venture. If you can figure that out, I'm sure, I mean, deploying capital is, I'm, I'm not saying it's that easy, but I think the supply side is even harder. Uh, my fundraising experience, I think, obviously, at my last firm was more institutional in nature because both the partners had 20 years each. Uh, Rahul, Rahul had founded Helion Ventures. You know, Bala had been a partner at Kalari, very experienced. So it was very institutional in nature. However, the first fund that we raised at Sparrow Capital was more around, you know, uh, 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 ringing people I knew very, very well that, hey, I'm doing something. Would you do something? And that that was that. So it was a very small pool that people just, it's like angel and seed investment, right? It comes from the people that you know really well. And it's not on too many conditions, on too many conversations. It's just purely that you know you, you know this person and they just back you. So that's how our first fundraise happened. And then from that first fund, fundraise, we started utilizing the access, a uh, little bit of... Uh, 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 like you said, institutionalized thinking, right? So for example, right from day one, we instituted, like I was making an IM for myself. Though I was just singly running it, but that process was very important, you know, because now that we are a, we are beginning to be a more than a one member team, uh, those processes are sacrosanct, right? So that was very critical. And I was sending, uh, my diligence sheet, which is my LP information sheet every month, right from day one, right? Despite I was managing small amount, it was very, very dated, right? And this was something that I learned at Kalari that, you know, you have to do this. Uh, so I think those things kind of helped us to sort of like get to the next step. Uh, and obviously one other element that I missed out was uh, there was a choice that one I could have made, which was, do I want to run this like a solo, solo GP fund? Because they're, they're, it's actually a world now, right? Solo, solo, solo capitalist, if I'm not wrong, right? That's what we call. It took me a year to convince Akash to finally join me. He was the one who was pushing me that let's do a startup, those weekend projects, right? So he said, look, I'm doing a fund. If you, let's figure out if you want to do this too. So that was the other thing that I did. So I think... The, the crux what I'm trying to say is, is largely about do you, are you building capabilities right from day one that can scale as you scale I, I hope that answers your question yeah so yes just one thing from my side uh, again with the uh, going into what you said initially what was the like your strategy when you're raising capital would you go to say some founders who have become big or would you target some HNIs who would are traditionally some LPs of some of those early stage funds? Or would you go to friends, family also? Like what was in your mind? Like so uh, threshold capital to achieve that? Yeah. So we raise very small amount, to be very honest. We just raised four crores. And most of this money came from uh, Flipkart Mafia, like senior guys at Flip, because I worked at Flipkart. I had still excellent relationships there. Uh, then founders, I worked with very closely at my portfolio companies. Although I was very closely involved with them. And some of the GPs that knew me very well, who didn't have conflicts, because a lot of GPs have conflicts to not invest into other private market vehicles, but there were some who didn't because they were running growth funds and essentially investing in a vehicle like mine didn't qualify as conflict. So that was that. Largely, they were people who knew me really well. Right. And uh, uh, see, this was the time when COVID had just started. Right. Uh, so all of this literally just happened on phone. Right. Uh, I mean, now people are getting used to doing deals like big deals, but this is just when it was just starting up. And, and, and how, how did you structure like it was a, since it's a very small pool of capital, right. Uh, on fee and all those things, right. You will be I took zero. Fee. Yeah. So I wasn't drawing salary. I'm still not drawing salary. Hopefully, you know, the next fund comes in. And uh, so it was a zero fee fund. And 
largely it was raised from a point of view that uh, you know i will still go to school i had a deferral i am actually at school um, i had a deferral and i said whatever money i'll invest i will potentially help me build my track record when i recruit back it was raised from a point of view that i do, I, I would be going to school after eight it just doesn't make sense for me to recruit for a junior role out of school and this track record will help me so that's how it started and the promise gentleman's promise was i will return the money back whatever money i'm not able to invest right so that's how it was raised but things started looking a little better from there and we ended up doing and, we're doing it and and like thinking of the future funds right so uh, which would be substantially bigger than maybe when you started so like how do you position yourself although your lps initially are like solid guys in, well in the ecosystem but say if i now go in a institutionalized way right to a decent hni like that's a, then comes the institutional later on some point right so how would you position yourself to boss how i am different there are hundred these uh, startups kind of funds investing and how you kind of differentiate uh, to so, a uh, right? yeah i get it i think we we already have some of those so by the way in the next fund we have some uh, family offices and larger folks there are people who have written very large checks to us i think the answer has been uh, broadly i think there are two things right so if you look at the stage where we are operating it there are people who are more high velocity like people who are doing 80 100 checks a year right we just did 10 investments so we are a very high conviction uh, portfolio right uh, so we are trying to do what me and akash were doing at series a series b which is very very deep diligence you know and bring that to one stage below and as a result offer signaling and brand to founders right i mean it just still surprises me people give out 7% equity for 125k or now 500k to vc in today's environment right especially in the us because there's a brand and you know people get something out of it so our idea is that if you want to do that you can't do that in a 100 uh, investment a year kind of pace right because somewhere it will die down so our idea is to sort of like bring that and uh, go one level deeper and potentially offer that to founders number two we are uh, i think that's one number two we are little bit of not sector agnostic so i mean i i don't say we are we have focus on certain sectors we say we don't invest in anything that we don't know right so we have followed that discipline for the last 18 months so we have not done yaar koi ev bike kaise banti hai hum nahi samajh mein aata to nahi samajh mein aata to wo hum nahi invest karte right to wo hum discipline apne investors ko promise karte hain ki we will only add to our investment thesis a sector where we have researched thoroughly and we know it very well and it takes time so 15 months down the if i start my work on a certain sector today maybe it'll take me 12 to 15 months of talking to people number one number two maybe one or two investment just to feel the sector and then say okay now this is my strategy versus saying ki anything that comes my way i'll look deeply and invest because i'm sure all of you know at the pace we are sitting in uh, there is so much to look at i mean you get bombarded with so many things so so those are the two things that we are doing where hopefully uh, it gives us that initial push and look at the end of the performance matters theek hai aapko jo bolna hai bol lo aapke wo track record pe kya dikh raha hai that matters to people but i'm saying that initial differentiation is this and then hopefully with these two things that i spoke about we are able to show something on an excel sheet that is differentiated and will continue to differentiate us in the future understood i hope that answered the question yeah Hey Yash, um, so thanks so much. Um, wanted to understand how did you kind of uh, learn about and navigate the whole SEBI environment for fundraising, fund structuring. Did you already know all of that from Arkham, or did you have to kind of learn it from scratch? You know, there's so much uh, kind of uh, work to be put in in setting up a prof fund. I knew some of it. Uh... but uh, you know the problem with smaller funds is you can't afford great lawyers and you know guys who are there for you so and we are still learning i'll not say we we fully know 
but yeah i think if you ask me that has been the biggest learning curve for me and akash because every day somebody throws a curveball at us that ye to possible hi nahi hai tumhare docs mein ye galti hai ya tumhare docs mein ye cheez sahi nahi hai i think uh, it has taken a time it has taken a whole lot because i think i remember this time last year when we had started thinking about our second fund we were contemplating whether we do delaware whether we do gif city what are the cost involved whether we do singapore india and obviously each of these quite choices have uh, uh, bearing on what you can do and what you cannot do right uh, if you do gif city structure you can't essentially take money from indian lps because that money cannot be wired back into india because of round trip uh and delaware structures are costly second uh, everyone will give you a different opinion whether that qualifies as uh, is it allowed in lrs or not allowed in lrs right so we just i think i remember speaking to what helped for us was ha- having i mean coming both of us coming from larger firms so we were able to talk to like i would able i was able to talk to karthik who is currently the cfo of kalari abhinav who was a general counsel at kalari now is at falcon so those guys helped a lot in terms of like i was just ring them and i think the answer came was keep it simple at your age is don't try to optimize for too many things so we ended up doing a aif structure i, I it just limits us to do a couple of things but you know it is what it is Yeah, so how do you think about um, because the landscape of VC, the VC landscape is very competitive, right? So there are VCs on you know at every step, every stage of the company. How did you think about you know differentiating uh, yourself with? I mean, even for IQ, I mean the space is getting competitive at the seed stage. So what was the conviction that made you think that oh, at this at this point you can come and you can compete with a smaller capital? I think that is a major concern for some people. I I honestly think uh, so. One difference, like I said, was doing high velocity versus high conviction, right? I mean, there are people at our stage, at least you know, who are writing smaller checks or syndicates or angels that we compete with. They write so many checks a year, right? We don't do that, right? So we are more of a high conviction. deeper founder relation portfolio right number 1 number 2 i think uh, my honest belief is that the equity is increasing right and if you if you think about take us or china i'm sure we can list down 50 great firms right like high reputation firms that founders really enjoy and that is that was our and that continues to be my belief that as our ecosystem expands it's definitely not a winner takes all market right uh, so there'll be space for other firms uh, to be created the, the, i think the secret sauce is to continue to do your strategy and which is and not not take impulsive decisions and compromise it um i wanted to ask how do you think about kind of Uh, leading versus participating did you have some uh, allocation ke itna lead karenge itna nahi karenge or was there a clear ke hum lead nahi karenge we want to just get into the best deals um, who already have leads any thoughts on that <laughs> yeah so uh, frankly i think we we are not approaching this from a very i would say position of strength that we have 100 million dollar today to think about these problems we don't like frankly right uh i think we won't even get that kind of money right i think the first fund was more about access right we so we are solving one problem at a time right which is so first fund may our promise to these so called people that i called on phone and said look i am doing this was hey i have i've been doing this for 6 years then i know people in the industry i do, still do get lot of high quality deal flow and some of them have said would i mean until then because i was working at large firms i couldn't do anything about it right i mean you don't angel invest because there's a conflict of interest now i'm thinking of doing this i could potentially capitalize on that deal flow and this deal flow comes from again flipkart folks founders i've worked with people i've known in the ecosystem 
So that's what we wanted to do. First fund was more about proving that we have access in the ecosystem, right? And we can get into top quality deal flow, right? Now in this fund, we are looking to optimize for, we can, uh, instead of writing, let's say a 50 to 100K check, we can start writing up to half a mil million checks. Like our ability to put together a larger round, get a seat at the table, right? So we have, as we have spoken to our LPs, we have, we have given them a guidance that in not, we, there may be some deals that we'll try to lead, but you know, given our check size constraints and the market that it is, which all of you know, right? Round sizes are just out of whack. I just don't even know how, how founders come up with some of those numbers, right? So the idea is to say that most of the times we'll try to do larger allocations in, in company. Right. Uh, still, we are not at a stage where we're saying that all the companies we will only lead, we'll not do a company, we'll not get a lead, uh, lead board seat, so on and so forth. Maybe that's an excellent problem to solve for. Would you have been asked by these LPs saying, okay, uh, some of them might have said, okay, uh, why not just uh, do a syndicate where you allow me to choose which of your deals I want to invest in because it's an access thing only. So um, or is that not something you faced, uh, from your LPs? No, it's, it's a matter of putting a foot down and saying, no, I don't want to run a syndicate. I mean, what's the, uh, I mean, see, they take time to be very honest. I mean, we have tried to do that to increase our allocation. It's very time taking and not the best outcome for founders because you do a confirm number, right? Uh, and to this day, I don't believe that they are the most, uh, see for a, for somebody who's doing a lifestyle business, who's running a company, he has access, but we were very clear right from day one, we won't do it because, uh, this is our bread and butter. I mean, this is for me, it's a full-time job, not, not a part-time job. And I'm going to run it like a fund. I mean, there were people, uh, so by the way, we were asked obscene rights that you know you'll have to give this that we didn't give. so we were very clear even we are because it sets wrong precedent for your next fund or the funds that you raise after that that you know in this fund you gave this right by it's the same as you know at series a term sheet if you give out certain rights it continue to haunt you uh, at least the founders you know later so we didn't give them we, we so uh, so one of the things you know uh, we have an advisory board as well. Uh, we're, try, we're trying to formalize it. This is something that came constantly from them is walk away. Okay, if you don't like something, walk away. You'll find others. I mean, you're better off operating with small capital at with more control versus, you know, raising larger capital, giving up some, some control. So we chose the former option. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank uh, you. Yes, you spoke about having a, a track record and working towards building that. But when you went out to raise funds for the first time, you would have started with a clean slate. So how easy or difficult was the conversation then? I mean, although it's people that you know, uh, when you don't really have the numbers, of course, your experience matters. But when you don't have your own personal track record, how, how does that conversation go? Yeah, it's tough. That's why you cannot raise larger money, right? And that's why, uh, so the quasi thing that we showed was my deal experience. That these were the deals that I was involved with very, because I'm sure each of you must be on certain deals, right? That you let from, at least my last two firms were structured in a way that there was a deal team on every team, which invested and then sat, did portfolio work on the same company. So, so that's what I did. Uh, and that's why the first fund was very small because we didn't have track record to show just, you know, past experience of saying, Hey, these are the transactions that I was involved with or, yeah. And then, uh, obviously for the next fund, the fund one portfolio sort of starts beginning to come in and aid that. But I think, uh, uh see, given we came from VC background, everybody understood we couldn't, even if we wanted to, we couldn't have invested because it's not, it was not allowed. 
right so that's the only thing that we had to show for but i think somebody is coming from a non vc experience i think they'll have to show uh, track or a vehicle investing to be able to raise money yeah sir another important point you spoke about that your deal flow pipeline help you where you were getting quality pipeline raising money so what about what would you advise to someone getting into vc newly to build that pipeline away ah uh, i think uh, i would say don't be an asshole to people it'll happen if you spend 7 years and just do what you're doing it'll automatically happen we'll build relationships sorry i used that word but i think i just boil down to that just be i i didn't do anything different it's just you know the boards i was on the founders i met uh the people i met the the peers i met across the board um uh, just be an okay person that they like talking to and you know you don't you don't stab them in back agar matlab usne koi deal bheji aap usse sab le rahe ho right par aap us hote hain aise log matlab i also encountered such kind of folks in the seven years i've done um just be professional i would say you know it will happen because this industry is designed for you to do that i mean it will happen organically this is my my thought uh, uh the other thing is just make sure uh, i mean that something i used to do was uh, um go out of the my way to when if i would meet somebody senior right so i would go out of my way to prep for that meeting so that i don't i don't come across as somebody ke see i i don't know if you guys have had that sense i used to get that sense that senior founders would look like yaar ye kon hai kyun main kyun main isko entertain bhi kar raha hu just comes with the term sheet you know main agar kisi bade firm se term sheet leta hu to ek analyst aake chipak jata hai usse question puchta hai right i just didn't want to be that guy right so every in each of those meetings i mean to an extent i could um one thing that i did was prepped well went into those meetings or help them over time right some some value add so so they continue to be great connections if they are today even today got it thanks uh hi yes this is akash i had a question uh, so you have also worked at bigger funds before starting your own fund right yeah. and bigger funds come with their own sort of privileges which is that you get access to high quality deals you get a seat at the table uh you have a track record so you have a your fund has a very high dense network right and then you chose a different direction and then you started something of your own so i just wanted you i just uh, wanted to hear your perspective like how different it has been uh for you uh, while working at a big fund and now uh starting your own small fund and um yeah as experience in terms of experience and is it, have you ever like thought like is it even worth it because there are so many legal things that i have to do i have to go out and pitch to everyone i have to like build my own brand build my like multiple other things which you don't have to do as when you are in a big fund actually it's been tough because see the biggest challenge that we have had to do is um since we do fewer companies so we like more face time right and the see if you are a large top tier fund founders give you face time right but if you're a small guy they want an answer very quickly i mean they they i mean some of them are polite but i think you know the expectation yaar jaldi bata do theek hai time nahi hai matlab i have been talking to so many people so that's one area where i miss a lot you know matlab aapko ek bahut constrained environment mein operate karna padta hai ki you only have limited time versus in my last firm do people tell me things have changed you know everybody has to take decisions yeah. very fast but i hope that's some markets are going to correct and things will come back to that so that's one area where kafi uh, difficulty hui hai to manage you know coming from that and to this and the other thing was uh, you had these um, people around you who you can go talk to like the cfo like the general counsel wherever and here you just have to be on your own so that's another difficult मतलब ऑडिट भी कराना पड़ रहा है तुमको तो वो भी किया है हमने लास्ट ईयर तो बट दैट्स आल्सो एक्साइटिंग इन सम वेज बिकॉज़ आई थिंक दैट कम्स विद इफ यू आर ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड समथिंग इकोनॉमिक्स आल्सो इट्स डिफिकल्ट आई मीन 
if you do the math of a small percentage economics at a large fund versus you know small fund you are far better off in short term there but i think what keeps uh, you going is you building something of your own and you know uh, one of the things that we have done differently is applied so i mean the question i would say ki yaar ye aise kyon nahi karte hain last firm mein and i would ask my partners ki isko aise institute karte hain some of them they would take some of them they would not take but here i get freedom to apply every single thing right because you know you are building that culture or investing culture right from day one so which is exciting so those are the plus point number 2 you you keep watching uh, you know motivational videos of large fund managers who have started small and built made it big so i think that keeps you going i hope we get there but but broadly it is that i mean you are sacrificing the first 4 5 years or maybe 10 years to for larger outcomes later hmm that is thank you so yes just, just on the point that you mentioned the economics one right even if you are as a uh, 20 million partner right in the initial stages like have you given a like fundamental thought like does it even make sense like at this stage maybe but since it seemed like for many of people here a long term kind of question right so you need a certain threshold size uh so does that question disturbs you or what have you thought about it like it's a 220 model right fundamentally whatever you do or without fee in the initial stages you zero right you have to put your own pocket or it will be you need to pay from your pocket and so more fundamentally like have you pondered and it would be great if any insights you have like because many of at least major many of us would want to follow the same path ultimately right so and that's how you do start with it yeah yeah it is tough i would honestly say the economics don't make sense uh uh i think it's a very personal question i mean i am at a stage in my life where by the time i did that i fortunately had savings where i didn't need to worry about i mean obviously i had to worry about certain things but it was not that bad that was okay i mean that's the reason i could survive a little bit and i think uh, this the second thing here is that and this is something one of the people that i respect a lot in the ecosystem told me being at some other place you will never be able to move beyond single d- single digit gp pool right here you have a shot to be substantially part of the sub- be a substantial part of the gp pool now it's your ability to turn this 10 million into whatever number that you can think about right and i think building something own comes with its cost i mean honestly i think i don't i cannot work for anyone now it's uh, because that independence thrill is is, is i think kind of takes over but yeah you are right i think short term there are challenges i mean it 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 impacts what kind of people we can hire what kind of lawyers we can engage right. what kind of firm we can engage for our accounting back office processes all of that right it's a hit and secondly i think you highlighted like how you differentiate yourself the quality of team the time spent so more more from like uh, like we do for a, investing in any startup do you th- have you like put thought on like this space as a startup when like every uh, early stage fund can't maybe give 10 10x cash on cash right or something so Uh, any thought like on the success probabilities although the india might be on the up cycle and the uh, uh, maybe 10 years back from us so substantial part of the early vcs might do well but any thoughts there uh, yeah like, so we yeah. we did lot of math and the whole uh, thing of what you would apply at every other stage at least at series a also you need one winner to to return all that money if you find two winner you do a cop you find you become a top quartal fund if you do one winner you be, you become a, a like in the top 30% quartal if i'm not right so i think it also boils down to that for us so if we if we invest in 15 16 companies we need to find one company that can return that money 
it's 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 also simple the, the from series a side we are taking one step below so the risk reward the reward ratio is also compounded by the 3 for x multiple right but the math still remains the same you need to find one company that can and, and to achieve that would you like be very sacrosanct say given your ticket size you won't want less than say 5% yeah we 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 are kg on ownerships yeah okay because we are doing a, a smaller portfolio right right so we are very kg on ownerships i mean so there are things that we don't uh, uh, invest in because of this issue because we won't get ownership so we have we followed that discipline of our entry and uh, upper bound of our valuation criteria so not gone beyond that right except in one or two cases where we felt that a case can be made and um yes uh, you know i think all of us are pretty early uh, we probably typically do not have the kind of wealth uh, to build uh, or add to gp commit so how did you kind of handle your gp commit first fund small enough but even for a second fund must have been tougher as it grows larger and larger to uh, you know set up a gp commit so for the record i want to make it clear i don't have that much wealth through I, i just said the savings i had was just to survive right <laughs> uh, so we found sponsor so our anchor lps and sponsor within our gp fund to commit to the meet the sponsor requirement in the uh, lp uh, capital pool vehicle so you can find a sponsor somebody to sponsor you thanks that was something i know yeah yeah you can find sponsor you can find people who can sponsor you and that's like supported by sebi as well right the aif to yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah <laughs> essentially this person is taking a sponsorship on you that's one way the other way is you capitalize your gp so instead of somebody investing in the fund as an lp somebody invest in your gp company which is let's say your investment manager by taking ownership of the gp and the, the the gp company may be essentially they are taking part of the gp carry pool right and that also happens a lot and in this kind of construct would they like want to be say part of the ic like typically uh... yeah i mean it depends they see some of them so a good good way to look for that is if you look at there are some funds with our xyz dash abc capital partners right typically those are gp pool partnerships typically right where the the sponsor comes in also gets a name on the board and you know some involvement in the ic and this conversation depends on how much they are committing right or so they the, the way something like this would be ke not only i would do 10% of your fund 20% of your fund i will also commit to your gp i'll also capitalize your gp i need my name i need one person from my team to represent in the ic so on so forth so it, so it varies depending on the capital they are committing on both side gp and lp right but but uh, again see that's that's the thing right i mean we were approached by some folks that you know let's partner let's join forces together and you know we can do again we 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 chose to can keep the control with us and still operate in smaller uh, capital pool got so um I, I, forgive me if any one else also has questions i'm interrupting but um you know any thoughts on why sparrow capital one of the i mean it, it's it must have been tough coming up with a brand name for a brand new fund right why did you not just say jain capital or Jain VC or uh, you know whatever. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I think look, I used to run a non-profit before that. It was called Digital Sparrow Foundation, and the idea was that since you are asking, uh, India was called Golden Sparrow when we were rich in natural resources. So I, so my thinking was that we are going to reclaim our spot in the global economy through our tech. so that's why i think we are going to go from being called a golden sparrow to tech sparrow because our tech is the tech is the new natural resource in, in the world order today right so 
just felt organic to use the same name. I think it's a kind of not a complicated name. I hope. Uh, yeah. Super. Thanks. Hey, uh, Yash, thanks for this. Uh, so I, I just had a question in terms of, um, so you mentioned how you're trying to differentiate against, you know, funds at this really crowded stage. Uh, but also it's not just the investment process, right? Like from uh, 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 once you put in the money, actually, then you're going to be adding whatever we call as value at least, right? A few things that we generally do. But I mean, let's say just given your, uh, let's say young age and stuff like that, right? Like, how have you been able to convince founders that you'd be a good partner to them post the investment as well? Yeah, again, so that also leads to, I don't have any operating experience, right? So we, we know very well in terms of what we can do and what we cannot do, right? So we don't promise. So, I mean, fundamentally, we believe that if you have to teach your founders, you have not done good selection. Okay, so I personally, I'm not a big fan of models where you come in do classes i mean what, what what are you doing while selecting so we don't believe in i don't personally believe as a philosophy i don't believe in that model right what i have figured out uh, uh, so by the way i i did two uh, during my past uh, uh, six years of uh, uh, series a uh, stints uh, i had about 14 15 boards Right, uh, because for one of the great things at my la all these firms were uh, the exposure was unlimited. You know, even in my second year into VC, I was on four or five boards, and then last last until I left uh, Kalari, I was on fourteen boards, largest being Urban Ladder to industry buying and whatnot. Right, so I think what I figured out and what is important, especially in this uh, journey, this stage that we are investing, is being able to listen. I think that's the single greatest value add you can do to a founder who is not looking to essentially come and talk to you about operational problems. There, there are so many angels and operators out there who are not expecting that you solve operation problems. No, I'm not even qualified. I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. So where we add a lot of value or uh, I don't know if it's value but uh, uh, validating a lot of things because most of these founders are doing things for the first time. Yeah, I'm the head of engineering, the comp structure, what are you doing in your portfolio? Mein kya hai? Right? Lot of validation. Matlab, I'm hiring this firm. They are putting me this thing. What do you think? Uh, then number two on uh, this thing that uh, uh, they would want to rely on you on fundraising. This firm has reached out. How do we structure? What is your fundraising strategy? and introductions wherever possible. And number three, yes, listen. Are you that guy that they can ping you at 1 a.m. in the night on WhatsApp, ke ye hua aad, somebody reached out, I got turned down by this VC, I, kya karna chahiye, right? I think those are the things, at least we, we, we don't go beyond that. We're not even qualified to. Where unko chahiye, I can make an intro to somebody who is more qualified than I am, but I'm Thanks, Yash. Uh, Yash, in terms of building a process for deal flow, uh, how different or similar has it been when you were an associate or a principal or a VP at a fund versus running your own fund? So ha has it been something that you've had to separately institutionalize building your brand? Uh, actually, yes. So Again, the good part of being at, I don't know if it's a good part. When you are at the same stage, you don't have to see so deals because the seed funds are already filtered out. Kar rahe. So you are still okay by just looking at portfolio of angels and because they have done the selection for you. And so when I was, uh, you know, VP at Arkham or uh, associate at my last firm, the outbound efforts were not I, I won't spend so much time on, you know, reaching out to every single person on LinkedIn, right? But abhi me, there is this inherent FOMO, hey, somebody ne kisi ne change kiya hai, stealth mode. Sab reach out to karna. I'm sure all of you can relate to that because, you know, we are trying to be the first person who are just say founder baat kare. So, um, 
so what we did was i don't know how successful it'll be is um we chose our lp base in a way jaise we identified pockets of high deal flow and we said ke is jaise you will find ke ye panch individuals bought deals karte hain they are very very tight together as angels i don't want to take names but i i'm sure you know there are certain pockets so to an extent we said har ek pocket mein se ek person ko apna lp bana lete hain and that's what we've done so we get lot of deal flow from lp Uh, my friends in the VC ecosystem, most of them, them have become senior guys. Some of them are even partners. So, unke pas jo deal flow aata hai, which is early for them, is something they send to me. Kya aur ye hamare liye bahut early hai to date, right? Uh, that is one. Uh, and of course, the the brutal LinkedIn sourcing is what we all should. Yeah. So those those three areas. I hope that answers your question. and now what is beginning to happen which is quite encouraging is uh, our existing founders send us lot of deal and to also give you a perspective and this was true at kalari this was true as arkam not a single outbound deal in the entire fund to fund three at kalari uh, arkam me what to to an extent i was not a single every single deal we ended up doing came from some proprietary source and that continues to be true for us as well we have not done any single out bounty okay so is there some data bag or like is it uh kind of um is out bound deal is yeah yeah matlab so we have to track it actively okay so i don't know how to say So everyone has some CRM. So CRM me source likhna padta hai, right? So we used to very actively track it. Ke what is our? I mean, LP Dex me jata tha. Ke kitte deals aap dekh rahe ho? Source kya hai? Portfolio me agar aapka thirty company portfolio, where is the source of this portfolio? Because that's a key metric LP is want to look for. Hmm. What is the source? So we even track it in our internal system. Every lead that we put, we have to put a source. Right. and like is it uh, something which is valid across funds or like is it i i think so i think so i mean uh, uh, typically my sense is i don't know there are a lot of people on this call we can allude to uh, but but uh, we can take a quick yeah uh, round but i think my sense is typically a bulk of your portfolio turns out to be proprietary deal flow maybe introduction from a founder somebody you know well from a peer but not direct or outbound you're just trying to cold call people i i i think the quality is not that great yeah fair i i don't know if anybody else had uh, a different opinion on this my my sense will be true for everyone yeah fa- fairly true for iq like a good chunk of our portfolio is uh, proprietary yeah but once in a while sometimes you get an idea so uh, out of the blue maybe you are scouting for say uh, particular space nobody is solving right and suddenly there is a you find out through maybe some cold read through twitter or linkedin and this sensible yeah. guy i yeah. think i think it may be true to this stage of investing because you are the first you you are going to be the first person in that company right but i think series a mein it's not uh, again because series a mein typically you know the ecosystem by then kyunki ek level of in institutional investment ho chuke hai companies mein right so then you're looking at other funds and those funds are actively trying to make intros to you right so maybe it, uh, you you're right and it could happen at series a but it hasn't happened for us yet So our but our hundred percent companies we've done every single one came from a proprietary source, whether a founder introduced or you know somebody like somebody senior at Flipkart introduced for example. Right, right, yeah. So um, you know, yes, you are currently at Booth. I think right, you are doing your MBA. Is is the idea to keep running Sparrow uh, through your MBA and then maybe go back to a larger fund? um or is the goal okay, okay post b school as well just kind of 
focus on scaling up sparrow and have you done a pros cons yet or taken a decision or it's like open let's see how it goes and uh, yes maybe an add on to that question so you doing mba and the conversation with lps how did that go like yeah. <laughs> so yeah it was a it was a talking point uh, but then uh, it helps when you have a great a co founder so he holds the fort i'm sure a lot of you know akash uh, uh, and we also said this to look i'm not uh, here to sort of like get a job out of my mba i'm not here to sort of do summer intern somewhere or then recruit back into a large firm no that's mba is on the side for me uh, and that continues to be true it's been 6 months so i am spending my time here because we do saas to build us network right uh, to build us lp network and i think to to an extent um, the school i am in that is help i mean it helps you know if you reach out to somebody and there are a lot of alums in investment management side i met uh, i mean to give you an example i met david potter he runs a 10 billion dollar long shot fund for richard taylor and daniel khan and uh, david potter is a booth alum richard taylor is a professor here i mean i'm not saying something will happen but it's good to get to know him connect with him and in a meet maybe 10 15 more folks like him and that's where i am spending my time on just to so the idea continues to be that we will i mean um, see to answer what i think uh vachal was saying if, if nobody would have given us money if uh, you know i would have said k <laughs> i would be recruiting back into some large firm and and i, I just to um, chicago is a very flexible school i only have classes on friday by the way that's how i build my classes and there are a lot of people who are doing full time jobs or running startups in bay area and who are also in school at least in my class cool. yes, uh, is any other questions anyone wants to i think we are also running out of time so uh, yash thank you so much this has been uh, super helpful really appreciated the straight forward answers um so th- thanks for taking time to do this uh no problem thank you so much um uh, yeah i hope this was some we'll see some of the funds coming out of this cohort please do write to me if at all any one of you is thinking of starting up uh, awesome. thank you so much yash this was awesome this was super inspiring no problem thank you thank you I- pleasure talking to you